when we talk about the uh, guns which are on machines like this, uh, are we talking about homegrown uh, like 7.7s, seven or uh, are we talking about uh, further afield? Like, uh, did did the majority of Dutch vehicles use their own uh, weaponry, like homegrown, or was it made uh, in other places? Well, the Dutch did really go all over the place uh, regarding to uh, engines, but also uh, weaponry. We didn't really create our own uh, weaponry, like machine guns and stuff, but we did use uh, quite common machine guns, like uh, the Lewis, and uh, we did use some German machine guns, like the MG08, uh, or the uh, uh, that other one I forgot the name of. Um, but and uh, these two actually carry uh, Belgian machine guns, which we had quite a big contract with, uh, I suppose. We did use quite a lot of Fabrique National uh, machine guns, which were like license built Browning machine guns. Uh, but yeah, it we we did create like uh, we did use the Lewis with like different cartridges and stuff. We did sometimes modify machine guns, but it's it's mostly foreign. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's uh, because I I know for a fact that uh, a lot of countries in Europe were trying to centralize their industry, and uh, especially with the war breaking out, you d you don't want to have a situation where you're having to rely on another country to build stuff. But obviously, that only goes so far uh, <laughs> when it comes to um, your know, general production standards. Moving on to the uh, next plane, this definitely looks like an ugly duckling. Uh, so the Kolhoven that we have here. Uh, which is, of course, sat in the bomber line after the uh, American wonderful XB-8. What's this one about cacti? Is there a, is there a reason why it uh, looks uh, so, well, atrocious, I think is a, a fair word. Well, yeah, it does look like this for a reason. The FK-50, the call of an FK-50, is actually a transport aircraft or just an airliner. And the B variant was an attempt to turn that into a military bomber. So this is bound to go wrong, as usual. And also, this is the first um, aircraft with a red outlining we come across. So this aircraft was never actually built. And when we look at these specifications for this aircraft, it would have had three gunners, one in the nose, one in the rear uh, on the top, one in the rear on the bottom. And they would have wanted to give it a bomb load of at least a thousand kilograms. So this is a bit far-fetched, but then again, it's a paper design, and they're all optimistic. They think they can get something done. But yeah, honestly, it's if this were to be added into the game, it's just a meme, because it's it's an ugly duckling with one heck of a bomb load. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it it very much um, it it very much is like the Italian and the French bombers, uh, which were either transport planes or they were cargo planes, and they were pretty much just pressed into service. Stuff like the Farman and the NC, uh, stuff such as the early Italian bombers uh, that you have in the game. So if uh, it's kind of sad that it wasn't built, uh, but I suppose you know it's, it isn't a stretch to take one which was built. Of course, the FK. Fifty, which had a slightly different nose to it, uh, you could easily modify that and add some guns to it if they wanted to go down the paper route. I personally wouldn't want them to, but you know how it is. Moving on to the premiums, uh, we have our second British machine of the list, the Supermarine Sea Otter. So let us know about this wonderful vehicle, soldier. Well, this one, you know, it's not that interesting in the regard that it's not Dutch, but it was a really odd uh, English design. Uh, so it, it looks like a lot of fun to actually have in the game, but we don't have it. Uh, it, it looks like some kind of Dornier wall engine mounted on a really odd boat design. It's just odd, <laughs> but it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, and it's actually somewhat competitive like in terms of it can actually be in in the current game uh it doesn't have to be like in a rank zero which you would kind of say if you see the plane <laughs> but yeah it, it looks like a lot of a lot of fun uh we didn't use them a lot so it it's one of those uh there's no place for them to add it so let's put it as a premium <laughs> 
Yeah, it does. Um, it it reminds me of the MBR two, I believe it is, in the Soviet tech tree, uh, with but looks like slightly less guns and slightly less use. But then again, you know, I still think it would be kind of cool to have. Uh, the, we are still lacking a lot of naval aircraft uh, when it comes to the game. So I any more to see, especially with the expansion of naval, I think is always a good idea. The next one is uh, for the uh, gift or event area. We've got the Fokker C10 Series 3. So why was this one picked as, a, uh, as an event vehicle cacti? What's different between this and the Series 2 and 1 that I believe we saw earlier? Well, um, I actually just found out one little mistake on my end. This aircraft should not have a Dutch flag, but it should have a Finnish flag. Because the Series 3 were licensed built in Finland. So they were just the, the, the C10 of Fokker, but then licensed built in Finland. And what they did was um, basically add a much more beefier engine into it. The ones we have in a tech tree have you know, the standard inline engine we Dutch use, but this one has a much larger radio engine. So why this is an event vehicle? Well, it's Finnish, and it's it's much different than the one you have in a tech tree. But other than that, it has the same two machine guns facing forwards and then the small bomb loads. Yeah, it's um, I suppose that makes more sense for it to be an event vehicle now, knowing that uh, it wasn't you know used by the Dutch. But I still think. You know, it, it still would be nice to see. I'm just wondering whether you know fellow uh, fellow Dutch people would like to see a Dutch event vehicle being you know non used by the Dutch. But then again, you know it is how it is. We have other vehicles in the game which have very similar stories. So at least from this point of view, it does make sense to see it. The I am not even going to try and pronounce that. So I'll leave it to you, soldier. How do you <laughs> how do you pronounce that, and what's this little beauty about? Uh, it's the Av Yolanda, which I was actually surprised uh, to see that was that was Dutch when I first saw it. Like it, it didn't sound Dutch at all. But yeah, we, it's the Av Yolanda P6 Hawk, which, as you might know, is an American plane. Uh, but the we Dutch license built it, it is actually which already marks one check mark I guess to add it, um, and it was really ever so slightly modified, so it's it's not it's not that different from what you get from a uh, you know in Britain uh, American Hawk, but it 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 looks quite fun uh, in that regard. It was license built, so why not add it? I guess. <laughs> So what's um uh, what is the slight uh, variation? Uh, do you know uh, what it is or um, because I uh, I know with like if if you have a look at a lot of the French uh, license well not they I suppose they were kind of license built because the 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 Americans brought over the planes to France and then they were modified so they would slightly change the guns or they would slightly change where like the uh, certain levers were in the cockpit is that similar to this or is it you know basically just to try and help with uh, pilots uh, you know integration. I don't know about all modifications, uh, sadly, but I do know of one uh, carrying like wheel caps or capped wheels uh, and some other really small minor stuff. Uh, because they were obviously licensed build, it was kind of easier to incorporate their own twist in it. It might have also carried some Dutch equipment in it. I do not really know about that one. In terms of like armament and engine, I think it's the same as the American variant. Uh, like having one 7.7 .7 and one 12.7 and having like a Curtis Conqueror engine so but it, it, it was license built and looks like well a lot of fun I guess uh, to have it after the FK 52 <laughs> yeah I agree and then uh, next to it is a slightly higher BR vehicle. I feel like looking at this tech tree so far, a lot of people are going to go for Fighter Line 2 instead of Fighter Line 1 just because of the uh, general monoplane uh, situation that you have set up here. So the on Antwerp, I'm sure I've said that wrong. Uh, what are these cacti? To me, they look like a mixture between a, a really uh, a hurricane and you, you've added a P-40s engine to it, uh, weirdly enough. So um, what these um, Antwerp aircraft are like, what they are about, 
is basically these are uh, sketches or designs of aircraft that never got an actual name. So what this actually says is Fokker Design 150 or Design 151. We will see multiple design aircraft like these uh, spread across the tech tree. But what the 150, the 151, and the 152 are like is they are basically the aircraft before the, 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 the D21, but then upgraded to have retractable landing gear and multiple different engines were planned. As you can see in the, the, the one all the way on the top, the 152, I believe that is a Merlin engine. So there's still quite some performance coming out of these aircraft. These are like the aircraft you, we could actually maybe see in game because the whole the basis of the aircraft is still the D21, that one that did fly and fought during the war. But then this is slightly modified. Mm, fair enough. That does make uh, that does make at least a little uh, a lot of sense. So uh, whenever so as a general rule, if you see like a name like this, it generally means that it wasn't built then. Yeah, m m uh, mainly when it. When it only has a design number attached to it, it was never actually built. Right. And moving on uh, to once again the naval line, we have another Fokker, uh, just like the majority of these. You're going to see a trend uh, <laughs> going forward with these. <laughs> how about uh, how about this machine soldier? What changes this one uh, from the previous uh, Fokkers that we see above it? Um, well, we already obviously touched upon the first T4. This is the a, you know, meaning it was actually an improvement uh, on, upon the previous design. Uh, this one we're looking at like 235 kilometers an hour, uh, which was faster than the previous one. Uh, and it, it has like three machine guns uh, and it's still and it has like 800 kilograms, whereas I think the previous one at 600. Uh, so we're looking at like 4 times 200 or 18 times 50 or actually a torpedo since this is obviously a float plane uh, uh, naval uh, vehicle. Uh, incorporating this into obviously naval gameplay, it would be a bit of a sluggish uh, torpedo, uh, torpedo plane, I suppose, or just a light bomb, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I mean, it is still very low BR uh, when we have a look at these. It, it isn't a surprise that a lot of these designs are very similar and also, you know, pretty much fill exactly the same purpose. The next one is the Fokker XA7, and uh, they've, instead of, uh, I'm guessing, going for retractable landing gear, they've decided to add more armor to the landing gear, good old JU87 style. What is this uh, machine about, Cacti? Uh, how does it fit into the XA series of aircraft? So uh, the XA7 is not one of those um, Fokker aircraft that um, they designed in America. So this is, a, this is actually a Fokker America design. And this is basically an attempt to make a, an, a, a little attacker aircraft. This one is armed with five uh, 30 caliber machine guns, all firing forwards. Or oh, wait, I'm going to take that back. Four firing forwards and one as a gunner. And then 488 pounds of bombs. But yeah, uh, as you can see in the design, it's it's an old design, <laughs> just huge fixed landing gear. The performance itself was pretty terrible. It does not reach 300 kilometers an hour. It's pretty darn slow. But it's just it's an interesting aircraft because well, only one of them was built. So yeah, <laughs> it, def it it really reminds me of the early Ju87 designs. Uh, the way that uh, the way that its general structure is, which I I suppose the, there is only so much you can do uh, when it comes to aircraft design in the 1930s. The next set is obviously some from Martin, so it's a different uh, designer from Fokker. What are these about Soldier? Are these similar to the Martins uh, that we see in the Chinese and the American tech tree, or is there uh, is there differences between them? Um, well, they're obviously you know. Uh, uh pretty American, uh, especially the first two. The first one, I think, was a complete copy, and the second one being like ever so slightly modified. But the uh, the third version was actually uh, quite modified. I, I, I don't really know the exact specifics on this one, uh, but it was like an export variant designed for the specifications uh, the Dutch wanted. 
from their vehicle. And well, just like other vehicles like this, it would be a low tier sluggish, but quite nice to play bomber, I suppose. Yeah, it, it, it's always nice to see those weird and wacky American designs, which uh, before they really nailed down the uh, smooth uh, ideas of keeping, you know, their crew in very, you know, similar positions. Instead, you know, you have kind of the weird clunky turret on the front. You've got the, you know, area on the back, which obviously isn't great for, uh, you know, your air, uh, I suppose your drag coefficient, you would call it. But yeah, it's just one of those weird things. Now, Van, so uh, before we get into this character, so uh, is, is the Dutch language the same as the German one in the fact that V's are W's? Uh, or, or is it, you know, is, is a V a V uh, <laughs> when it comes to it? <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of people say German is similar to Dutch. But as a person who is absolutely terrible at German, I can say that there, there are a lot of differences between the languages. So here, a, a, a V, we pronounce this as van der Stock. So that is basically how it's pronounced. So a V is still a V. It, it's fun or a V. And a, a W will be a V. Well, it's V, V. It's, it, it's very close to each other, though. But basically what this aircraft is about, this is your um, starter premium aircraft. So when you play the German aircraft tech tree and you unlock all your rank one, so whatever the uh, requirement is, you get yourself a free premium. And that is what this aircraft is. It's a D21, but then of a guy named Van der Stock. So it's like he's a pilot ace or a well-known pilot that flew the aircraft, and that is basically what this one is. You can see aircraft like these in every single tech tree. I believe the Germans have uh, the Flagels BF109, if I'm pronouncing it right. But it's, yeah, so it's basically like, like that. It's an, a specific aircraft attached to a certain pilot. Yeah, I, I like them. Um... I like uh, those, like a Tux Gladiator or a Rasmussen's, yeah. uh, oh, what is it? Uh, Rasmussen's P36. Uh, like all of those to me, uh, it, it's nice to put a little bit of history into the game in the form of, you know, uh, their pilots and their stories. Now, the next uh, gift vehicle is one which, I mean, I, I have had many discussions about the Barracuda and its usefulness when it comes to the war, its usefulness in actually existing, and also its very, very odd design. But one thing I've never discussed is it being in a Dutch tech tree as an event vehicle. So go through, go through uh, that idea, soldier. Why, why, uh, what is the relation between the Dutch and the ferry Barracuda? And also, why do you see it as an event vehicle? Um, well, we uh, the Dutch ac operated exactly two aircraft carriers during the well, war, uh, well, the whole period, I guess, the whole age, um, and those two were both British, uh, well, ex-British then, I suppose, uh, and one of them came equipped with those Barracudas when we uh, basically got it. And we did try the Barracuda out, but we weren't really too happy with it, so we kind of abandoned it. Um, but it was like a sort of, you know, it get, it comes with this uh, attached to it. So uh, that's why it's kind of an event vehicle, like to sort of well, commemorate, I guess, the, the gift of the uh, aircraft carrier. Which also were both named the exact same, by the way, so that makes it quite confusing. <laughs> both aircraft carriers were had the same name. <laughs> well, wait, why did they have the same name? We Dutch did l l like to name uh, ships like twenty times the same. Uh, so th there's this one person that is quite famous in World War Two history. If we're talking about like the Jaffa area, which is Karel Dorman, he led a force with of a few warships including a few dutch ones uh, and he had like a famous quote about him like follow me uh, before they got slaughtered by the japanese uh, so uh, we did we did just just call it after that one hero like twice i guess <laughs> That is so odd. Because normally, at, at least when I look at British uh, naming designations, you will have a bunch of ships which have the same name, but they're never around on the same era. 
So therefore, it, it's kind of a homage uh, to the older ship uh, to call the newer ship it. But at the same time, that that just that lays the ground for complete confusion. Moving on to the third line, uh, we have another uh, uh, Coolhoven aircraft in the form of the FK-56. So what's this one about, Cacti? It definitely looks different to the other designs. Got rid of the biplane idea and finally joined the monoplane club. Well, it's still not a great monoplane aircraft. <laughs> I'll just get that out of the way. Uh, this, this is a trainer aircraft. It has one fixed machine gun firing forwards and one machine gun firing backwards as a gunner. And that is basically all this aircraft is. It's 300 kilometers an hour when it comes to top speed. And well, yeah, it's it's a trainer aircraft. So we thought it has a gun. It could do something in the game. So let's add it in. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I mean, I, I'm definitely not against trainer aircraft. Uh, they've just got to make sure that they have sufficient armament uh, to push forward with. Moving on to what is definitely the wackiest uh, design that we have so far. Uh, what is this uh, monstrosity soldier? Why, why now did the uh, did Fokker decide that a push pull idea was uh, <laughs> was the way to go with this aircraft? And also, why is it labeled uh, a prototype? Is that just to, you know, uh, did it? I'm guessing it never reached production. Uh, yeah, this is the D twenty three, which was. Well, the last in its uh, series, like the D series, uh, it was this 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 design of for a you know push and pull aircraft, which never really got off the ground. There was only one build, which is this one, um, and it, it it actually had like nothing it would have had if it were to go into production. It kept uh, two uh, water engines, which weren't the ones they wanted to for this plane but they had them i think laying around so they just put those in there uh, and it, it it was it had like only two machine guns which is pretty terrible uh for this idea uh, so that's why it's mostly the prototype the prototype was like not what it should have been but what they made up like quickly on the go i suppose um so yeah, it's it's this very odd design, but not executed properly yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it will get better because there are multiple variants of this plane in the tree, actually. I think a good way you can look at this is um, it's more to, to the test out the concept of push-pull. Like the actual engines and weapons they wanted to use were not on it, but it was just to test out if they could maybe pull it off, which they did. It did fly. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's kind of sad how the push pull idea disappeared uh, quite quickly uh, in aircraft design. In in my opinion, it was uh, one one of the ones which was just you know it was just kind of interesting. Uh, at the end of the day, making aircraft incredibly unique. Now we have a name which hasn't been represented yet, the Dornier series of aircraft. So uh, what are these two about, uh, Cacti? Obviously they're naval aircraft, but um, are we looking more about uh, reconnaissance aircraft once again, or are these more tailored towards bombing? Uh, well, the, uh, the DO-24 is a reconnaissance float plane used by the Germans. But we Dutch also really like them, so we thought we use them as well. There is actually one of these still standing in the National Museum in the Netherlands. So if you're ever around, I highly recommend you go there because it's a beautiful aircraft to look at. But if I'm correct, um, soldier, you may correct me if I'm not. I believe the K variant was sort of like our own special variant that would have carried uh, bombs of some kind. So it's not uh, full yeah. reconnaissance. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's correct. We were, and we also were one of the only if not the only user of the k series i think the only other user of the k1 was switzerland and the k2 was only for the dutch so they were actually quite designed for us i suppose and uh, in terms of bomb loads they have actually quite a decent bomb load <laughs> they have like 1200 kilograms 1200 kilograms on this yeah jesus I, I think the picture is doing it a little wrong. It, it it has three engines mounted on the high wing, and it's it's a rather large aircraft actually. 
Fair enough. Like the so yeah, so it has it has three three engines. Yeah, sat on this top wing. That, that okay. That makes a lot more sense. It's basically um, take a Catalina but make it more German. I'd just like to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Blackie, Daniel Stanton, J. Wilt, John Ryman, Joseph Anders, Martinez, Moxie, Super Cacti, Uyens Terry, Elove Goat, and Seductive Trashcan for supporting the channel.